Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Snow White with the Red Hair, Chapter 127.5. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we got this nice little epilogue of the whole the whole regalia and perfume arc. Um, as we just see, everyone just, like, hanging out for the first time in years. You know, the whole original quintet, Sans, Obi, with Ryu, and Asetsu sort of bantering. The Burgat twins looking on. Uh, that's all nice. Um... And then I think the real heart of the last chapter was that, like, middle conversation between Eisatsu and Kaguya, as Kaguya just thanks Eisatsu for, for looking out for her regardless of his own reputation. It's really sweet. I want them to be together, uh, even if they can't. Uh, but then it's time for everyone to pack up and go home, especially because head pharmacist Garrick is um, hanging out at Lilius. So they have a bit of a, of a reunion with her. She comments on how much Ryu has grown. And they get back to work, uh, working on, on the antidote to the perfume. And then some time passes, and the gang heads back to Regilia's place. Um, and they have this nice little, nice little, like, luncheon where they discuss the state of the perfume. And finally, 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 uh, technically Shiryuki only asks Eisetsu, do you like plants? But the implication is, she's finally asking about the Fosterias. Ending why they came to, to that part of the world in the first place. So yeah, with that said, let's dive right on into chapter 127.5, which will have nothing to do with any of that. Uh, we have this color cover here for, for a, you know, side chapter. Uh, it, it's nice. You got, you know, Shiryuki and Zen behind this flag. It's real good looking. Uh, it might be the cover of the magazine, which is weird for like a half chapter. I don't know. Like it's only 12 pages once you get past the scan letter page and the cover. Um, or actually... Because this is titled Special Chapter First Part. So maybe the chapter that's supposed to come out next week or so is going to be like 127.75 or something. I don't know. Um, as the winter snow is melting, Zen, Mitsuhide, and Kiki move to Wyrant. I believe this is before the perfume arc, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, the perfume arc is a little later in the year, I think. Uh, anyway, this looks to be Kiki and, and Hisame. Uh, as he, I'm assuming this is Hisame says, Thank you for picking me up, Lady Kiki. It's nothing. We had quite a bit of luggage. You bring all your household belongings, even though you'll only be here until spring. Uh, she's like, yeah, Hisame like listens in on that, and Hisame tells her, Before we left three days ago, I was at your house. It was wonderful that I got to hear a lot of things about you. And Kiki is just like, Please just forget, please just forget about that. <laughs> Like, ah, uh, don't, let's not look at my, my childhood. Uh, and Hisame goes on, like, about the time when you were starting to learn about needlework, you made your father an overcoat. What? That's oddly, like, like, you expect, given Kiki's response, a sort of, you know, something like teasing. That's just sort of oddly sweet. I don't know. Anyway, the other half of my luggage at your house is my gift to you. I guess meaning, like, he's just giving her his stuff, I think. Um, I will say, though, you know, I've expressed my frustrations with this translation before. Uh, LMGS does not do the side chapters. So I'm going to, like, try to work through this, but also I'm not entirely sure how much of the meaning we're actually, like, getting here with this translation. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Kiki says, ah, thank you. And Nisa Mage, like, smiles at her and laughs. I just thought it would make you happy. Uh, like, what is in that half of the luggage? Is it just, like, his stuff or something? I'm not, not entirely sure. Um, and then I think this is... So Serato's doing that thing she does, where, like, there's no reason to hide who's speaking here, and it's not immediately obvious who's speaking here, uh, but, like, it feels like it should be. By the way, I was wondering if His Highness could join us for dinner this evening, which, like, I'm not sure who that... Like, that might be... I feel like that's Kiki, and then Hisume says that's thoughtful, because then it's Kiki who picks up. On the day we arrived, we thought you might be tired after be being invited to the castle, so we will be meeting at Mitsuhide's residence. Without him or with him? Because, uh, like, the way, the way Hisame has that, like, look of, uh, I don't know, don't know if I like that, and responds, how nice, I can drink in peace, which makes it sound like she's saying they're going to drop him off at the castle, and then Kiki's going to go to Mitsuhide's on her own? Is that what she's saying there? Again, I'm trying to, like, like... Clarify all this translation stuff. Uh, and then Kiki says, also, since we are in Wyrant, let's have breakfast together. And it's, and he's always taken aback. He's not normally this, this open. 
with him. You with me? And Kiki nods, come to my residence. If you would like, it can be every other day or at least once in these three days. Right, because it's only like a three-day thing. Every other day is not a big thing. Um, or no, is it a three-day thing? Because he has the line before we left three days ago. And I, for some reason, that got twisted in my head into that he'll be staying at the castle three days ago. But it's actually they'll be there until spring. So maybe these would be more like, or at least once every three days or something. I don't know. Uh, Hisame tells her, I don't mind traveling in the morning, but what if we could alternate between each other's houses? And Kiki sort of agrees, that sounds nice. Then it's settled. Now, I'm saying this as reserved as I can. I believe we'll be able to get along quite well. But if there is any standard that you wish, you are free to set yourself to that. Uh, I'm trying to, trying to work out what, what that translation is getting at. Um, I think what he's saying is like, if there's any, any like ground rules to our relationship, um, f you know, set set those ground rules if you want, and I'll follow them. I think, but it's a little, but like he, he he's taken aback by that. And I forget before we saw them with the soiree, there wasn't really the sense that they were terribly close. Like their marriage is kind of arranged, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, but after Kiki is sort of surprised at that, she just smiles at him, and they sort of smile at each other. Um, and he and I ask, since the banquet is at nighttime, do you mind if I sleep a little? Uh, and Kiki responds, that's fine. I'll wake you up before we arrive. Uh, and Hisame tells her, if you also feel tired, you can come over and lean against me. It's a bit cold as well. And Kiki thinks about it for a moment and then just like hands him a blanket. Here you go. And Hisame is a little disappointed at that. Um, and then we cut to some time later, like the next day or something, we see this whole host of food laid out. Uh, I'm guessing this is one of their breakfasts, not the first one, because Hisume responds, or Hisume says, I believe we had this at your house as well. It's about to run out, though. It's like a tea or something. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but like, this is clear clearly not their first breakfast like this. And uh, Kiki tells him, I shall send some more to you then. Perhaps I shall write Lord Seiron a note. If you're able to, uh, and, and Kiki responds, if you're able to receive an answer from my father, you may. And um, then we cut to them leaving, um, and a messenger comes up. Ah, Lady Seiron, and he has this letter for them. There is an invitation to the both of you, which I'm guessing is going to lead into the the initial um, ball at at Aesetsu's place where they ran into Sh uh, Shiryuki and Obi. Yep, here we go. They open up the letter. Uh, Rugilia's banquet, huh? And Hisame turns to Kiki. I think I can go. Are you? Aren't you also assigned patrol with His Highness? Uh, and Kiki thinks, it's like I was asked in perfect timing, which is a weird turn of phrase and seems like a, a weird translation bit. But I think what she's saying is, you know, it's, it's odd how that's like the one night she's off or something. Um, and Hisame comments her like seeming displeasure with the situation. So that's why your face looks like that. Mm. And Kiki tells him, well, I think you're more fit for night banquets. Uh, Hisame laughs. Yeah. In the old days, you would always act so stiff like a pillar. And Kiki looks at him kind of confused, like a pillar? Yep. And Kiki laughs at that. And it's a much more like, like that's a genuine smile on her face in a way that we haven't really seen with them, at least in this chapter. Uh, like it's the start of their, their relationship really building here. Uh, and then Kiki like stops her laughter and almost like mocks Hisame here. Well then, I intend to be even stiffer this time. And we see... Kiki looks over at Hisame, and we see Hisame is, like, sort of shocked at, at this whole exchange. Kiki looks at him. I guess, like, shocked at, like, how, how like, jokey she's being. Uh, and Hisame, like, turns away, and Kiki just keeps looking. Uh, or no, Hisame doesn't look away. She, he keeps looking at her. Because he then responds, This seems like a situation where two people meet eye to eye. Is that right? And Kiki responds, I suppose it is. You sometimes don't look away from me, so I wonder what's on your mind. And Kiki thinks, well, it might just be a habit, but you've always been that person who keeps to himself. Well, it is my secret wisdom to life. And then, like, pauses before, before going on. I won't tell you any more, though. And Kiki snaps back. You'll be emotionless then. But, like, this banter, you know, it, it, it's sort of the thing where, like, the stilted nature of, of this translation always sort of undercuts it because they're clearly like 
we're supposed to get the impression they're bantering, they're, like, having a good time. It's a genuine warm moment between them. But, like, the the translation is so odd. It's so stilted. Uh, I remember back when, when 123 first dropped in Japan, when my, my initial sort of leaving the series happened, they described the translation that would be listed as Brenda Cheese on the subreddit, uh, which is who's doing this, as, like, the Google Translate version. And, like, it does kind of have that quality. Like, these two lines are quite... You know, I talked about the Cuckoo chapter earlier today, how that final conversation between Nagi and Erika sort of didn't quite feel like they were on the same page. Like, there was something weird going on with how both their lines were translated. And that's sort of the thing here. It doesn't quite... Like, I can see the way this could be banter. Like, if you if you sift through it, you can see a sort of bantering thing going on there. But it's not depicted in the translation as well as I think it's meant to be. I don't know. I don't want to be too critical of fan translators because, like, they do this for free and all that. But I'm going to be when I have to be because I'm a reviewer and it's sort of what I'm supposed to do, I guess. But either way, they're laughing. They're, like, having a genuinely good time together is the point. Like, we've got, like, the crackling fireplace... And after some time passes, Kiki looks over and knows that Hisame has, like, fallen asleep very openly. Um, and then at some point, Hisame wakes up and he sees Kiki asleep on the ground next to him. It's really sweet. To be continued April 23rd. Um, okay. So, like, it is a cute chapter. Hisame and Kiki were never really a dynamic I like. Like, I remember, it's been a while since I've since I visited those early days of the series, I remember when the anime came out way back in, in when I was in high school, I was a big Mitsukiki kind of guy. You know, I like Zen Yuki and like Mitsukiki. And that was, that was my thing. Um, I remember I was not exactly pleased when Hisame entered the picture uh, as, as Kiki's already established fiance. I was like waiting for some sort of, you know, she breaks up with him and follows her heart or something. And that increasingly was like, that's not going to happen. Um, and, you know, we see here, they're like, genuinely they genuinely seem to like each other there's like some some like some like snide remarks some banter going on but like they seem to genuinely enjoy each other's company and it's just nice uh like like this last little bit of them like these last two silent pages and it's going back to my translation complaints very telling that it's the silent pages that work so well uh like their laughter just seems genuine the way that like Kiki eventually knows that Hisame has fallen asleep beside her and then, like, goes to join him. It's cute. It's a cute little thing. Uh, I don't know if next chapter is going to still be continuing this little little side story or if we're going to move into the plot proper. Uh, but if it does continue here, I would not mind another chapter with these two. I will say, if it is another another side story chapter, I would like to only have a, week, have a month off until the next one, not another, another two-month break or anything. But, like, it's just a cute time uh, setting up how they were sort of first introduced to the Rugilia arc. It's just cute, and I liked it a lot. Um, and, yeah, I, I'd be open to having another chapter of, of this storyline. And if not, we'll just move on with the, with the, with the story. But, yeah, uh, all in all, a fun time, sort of mired by the translations, but that's not really that big a deal. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you'll enjoy the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!